Hey there everyone, it's Michael Dougal. This is your Toronto real estate update and I've got all the data as far as sales reported and the changes with the average price in the housing market and with respect to condominiums. So I'm gonna answer a lot of unanswered questions during this video because the market and the average prices, they skyrocketed the first few months of the year and then you can say the values dropped a little bit. However, right now we're in the summer, the market is very volatile and nobody really knows as far as our value is gonna be going up or going to be going lower. So this first chart I wanna show you over here shows uh, the average sale price for detached houses, specifically in Toronto. And you can see here, like based on the stability of the line over the past few weeks, that the average price has pretty much hit its new normal. Our average price is somewhere around 1650000 right now. But going back to, uh, you can see the end of June, the average price was $1,812,000. And then at the end of March, or middle March, you can say that's when the prices were the best. For all you homeowners, you were better off selling your house probably back then, and that would be sometime in March. Not necessarily because the average price was a lot higher, but back then homes were selling a lot quicker and a lot of properties were getting multiple offers. Whereas right now, you need to be a little bit patient. You need to price your property correctly. You need to make sure that the condition of the home is good because in some areas, surprisingly, there are more listings than there were, you can say, at the end of last year and of course early this year. So it's really dependent based on the neighborhood. Um, as you can see, based on this blue line over here, these were the average prices in 2020. So of course the number was quite low during the month of March 2020, that's when the pandemic hit and then it experienced some fluctuation, but at the end of June and in July, you can say values, they started to restore themselves. So these are detached homes, but this next chart over here I'm gonna show you is the activity on a week by week basis. So like I mentioned back in March when it was ideal for home sellers to put their listings up, is specifically because the number of active listings was very low. The orange bar specifically shows the number of active listings, which are homes that are available for the public to purchase. So this number you can see increased in March, increased in April, and then reached its highest point in May. That's when there was the most detached homes for sale. And then it's uh, slightly decreased as the number of new listings also decreased. There was only 325 new listings that hit the market uh, just last week. Whereas look at April 14th, there was 614 new listings back at that time. Um, now let's take a look at the months of inventory, which is a general strength of the market. And if it swings more in the favor of being a seller's market, advantageous to sellers, or a buyer's market advantageous to buyers. So the lower this number is, the better it is for sellers. Conversely, the higher the number is, the more advantageous it is for buyers. So it was 1.33 over the past week. And this is on the higher side, based on these numbers here, we're looking, it was pretty much under one until April 14th. And then April 14th onwards, as there were more homes that were listed for sale, our months of inventory was slightly higher, but this is in the grand scheme of things, not really a big difference in this market with the months of inventory being only 1.33. I mean, you're very likely gonna sell your home fast for a great price, especially um, in contrast to the price you would have gotten last year. Unless of course there's unique circumstances, maybe your home um, is like a problem property, perhaps it backs onto a graveyard unfortunately, or it backs onto apartment buildings, maybe it's on a busy street. Uh, these kind of unusual like properties are not selling as fast as they were typically. And of course the whole luxury market is a little bit slower. The luxury market we saw was doing very, very well the first few months of the year, but now we're seeing properties specifically priced above $2 million are taking on average 40 to 50 days to sell. And now taking a look at the condo market, how is the average price changing? Because the condo market has been so far this year pretty similar to what it was last year. So the next five, six months of the year should be really, really interesting. Let's see if the prices and the price per square foot does increase because clearly as far as this chart shows here, there's maybe like a 60 to $70,000 difference with the average price based on the space between the yellow line and the blue line. The blue line represents 2020, the yellow line represents 2021. So over the past week, the average sales price for condos was $730,000 and it's been hovering around the $700,000 mark for the past few months. It did dip a bit lower, and it also reached a high point in the beginning of June with the average price being $766,000, but maybe that was just luck. Maybe it was the fact that there were more luxury condos that were listed and sold during that time, bringing uh, the whole average price a lot higher. 
because right now we can see, again, there's a very small difference to the average price condominium this year versus the same time last year. And based on the months of inventory, there's a pretty similar trend to what we saw with the detached market in that the months of inventory is definitely a lot higher. It was at 1.73 over the past week, but in contrast, take a look at it April 7th. Back then it was 0.8 and even earlier it was 0.5. So what I'm finding in the marketplace right now is specifically investors are not the one that are purchasing condominiums, but the people who are purchasing condominiums are a lot of these uh, first time home buyers that have given up on the idea of buying a detached or a semi-detached home. They're buying condos but what's not selling are condos that were typically purchased for the purpose of renting out. They're not selling. We're also seeing that units which don't have parking are very hard to sell right now. There's quite a lot of pre-construction units being sold right now which don't have parking. So if you're a homeowner and you choose to rent your parking space, in some areas you're gonna get 250, even $300 a month just for your parking space. So if you have a unit with a parking space, likely you shouldn't have trouble selling your home and with a very good price per square foot as well. And this next chart here may surprise you a little bit because the number of sales as shown by the purple bar here is lower than what it was back in March, yet the average price seems to be a little bit higher. So what's going on there? It's that there is less sales because there are less listings. So uh, less supply and more demand leads to higher prices. It's not like there are less sales because there's less interest in the market. It's simply that not a lot of homeowners have put their homes on the market just yet. And maybe that has been because of the lockdown that was in effect. But now that the lockdown rules have lifted, at least temporarily, it'll be really interesting to see what happens with the condo market and the condo's average price. And I really hope you found this information helpful. If you did, then consider subscribing so you're notified when there are new videos that I release. And be sure to drop a like and a comment. I want to know that you're watching this video. And I'm looking for ambitious real estate agents. If you're considering maybe partnering up or looking for a different brokerage, then reach out to me. My contact information is in the description box below and I will look forward to seeing you all next time.